I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, there's no cleanup. The there's army here and there sparsed out, but the bulldozers are very limited. They're working on certain areas. Don't know why they don't have international help. I don't know if it's the refusal of Japan, or I don't know if it's because of the radiation or the danger of aftershocks and more tsunamis that people aren't coming in. But I mean, if I can come in here, I can bring food. I can lend a hand and help clean up. I can walk through here and survey the area. I don't see why anyone can't. Okay, now we're going through, um, this is the one of the towns in Miyako. This is pretty bad. This place is pretty bad. You think of the power of the, the tsunami, man? I mean, a lot of people see the, the tsunami and they think that I can swim, but unless you can swim and you're made of steel, you're not gonna be okay, because even if you are made of steel, man. God. Wow, the, the house all the way to the top is because you know, you see the, how the walls are damaged and these things. I think that's all from the debris in the water. The bodies um, fill up with acid and they float back to the top. They say that there's bodies that pop up every so often. Fourth floor of the hospital. We're four floors up. Huh? They weren't safe on that second floor. You know, if scary it would have been to be on this fourth floor right here. And seeing all the other buildings below you get destroyed and get swept away. And thinking if this building's gonna stand. First feeling you have is disbelief. You look at it and you just cannot believe that what you're seeing. You can't believe and imagine that this was a town. The second feeling you get is a little bit of denial. Like, no way, this can't be happening. This this can be happening. The next phase is probably a little bit of depression, sadness. That always flickers in and out with the feeling of wanting to help, with the feeling of you gotta do something. It's so cool to see them writing it down what they want. They usually don't say anything. It's getting, I'm getting closer to these people. Every day is a battle for these people. Every day is something hard. You've lost your loved ones, you lost your house, you lost everything. You're sitting in the evacuation center with nothing. Nothing to read, nothing to do. And the worst thing is probably not knowing what, where your future is going to go. There is no future. He said this is stuff that was left over yet. They didn't get washed away. So this is like a souvenir. Thank you for coming to take care of us. Rescue cat, rescue cat. This is fish, dude. Yeah, this is perfect. Oh, sh earthquake. Watch out, get away from this building. Oh, don't fall on my car. It was probably the biggest earthquake I've ever been in, the longest. And it just kept going and usually earthquakes are like two, three seconds and you're like, oh, earthquake, finish. 
but this stuff just kept going. Minutes later, it was a uh, the tsunami warning. Right after the earthquake, had the whole the map of Japan on TV, and it, the whole thing was lined. The tsunami warning. Thirty minutes later, everything's gone. Unbelievable. If I was here, I'd be dead. If I was here, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have left. I wouldn't have thought anything. This devastating would have come through. People might be dead. These people, there's a good percentage, there's a good chance that the people in the pictures are dead. That's, that's, that's depressing. They said too, there's, there, there's never been like birds like that, that many birds. A lot of sea urchins, a lot of clams got washed up. You can, you can see all the clams all over. And they said bodies too. Holy shit. And to think that this has been a month, it's been, probably been doing a little cleanup and a little tidying up here. This is a month of cleanup right here. God. It doesn't stop. Look at it. It's continuous. Dude, this is worse than Toddle. Everything's gone. There's still, in this town, they're still missing, what, over 10,000 people on, that's missing and, you know where they're missing. They're missing under the rubble, in the ocean. You're dead. Kind of eerie to be standing in places that people die. To think that people actually were, were that they lost their lives here. Never in my wildest dreams that something like this would happen. I mean, just walking through this. This is the third floor of a hotel. And you, you look at you look out the window to the ocean, and you, if you imagine a tsunami coming, I would. Bet anything that I had that I'd be okay, I'd be safe here. You're on the third floor, man. But this just went right through. There's fish, there's fish here on the third floor. There's oysters all over. This place has a lot of oysters, huh, this town. God, it just went right through it. The third floor was nothing, man. The chandeliers got stuck in them, seaweed stuck in them. So this whole third floor was engulfed in water. The worst I've seen is a picture of Hiroshima. Hiroshima before and after and literally when I was walking through Taro, when we went through Kesanuma, uh, Rikuzen Takada, it was, might have been worse than, uh, Rikuzen Takada especially, it looked worse than, uh, worse than um, Hiroshima because Hiroshima I think had more buildings than after atomic bomb. Some of these is chocolate cakes that you bought. <laughs> oh yeah, check this out. This is where we need to be. Oh, they put in wasabi, everything. Arigato. Sashimi plates, man. That's so awesome. It makes you feel so good to see this, man. I mean, we get, I mean, the all the shit we're doing is, it gets you so tired and you're spending all my money, but you know, it's, it's shit like this that fucking, man, makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> Pudding water. 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 Like a, you're on a level that 
it's hard to explain because you feel their sorrow a lot more. You feel their their gratitude when they smile and tell you thank you. They're no longer these people that got hit by the tsunami. They become people that you you know, people that you see as we could I could have simply been you. I might say I'm dedicating this part of my life because I I've sold the animals that I loved. Um, I'm getting rid of all my animals. I'm literally draining my accounts. Um, but it, it it's become something for me. It's become more than helping the people. You know, first it started off with helping the people I know, and then when I went up there, and you see the devastation, I got to mingle with the people, talk with the people, see their spirits, see the happy people, see the positives that work through the hard times, see the ones that are down, see the ones that don't talk and just sit and stare into space. And that ignited a little fire in my heart that wanted to help. The feeling that I get when I help these people, the satisfaction I get when I, I buy these shoes and this, this lady comes and grabs the shoes and grabs it to her chest and holds it and walks away and thanks me for it. It is, it's priceless, it's priceless. The, the, the return I get from this is priceless. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be. Yeah.